Before we begin, let's go over the rules of paper mache. You must be working on a piece of newspaper or scrap paper. This will help you immensely when it comes time to clean up your space. Um, before you put your hands in the paste, you need to place your strips of newspaper or paper towel on your, um, your workspace. Uh, if you touch the paste first and then go to work with it, it uh, covers all of the strips and paste. Paper mache paste is only to be put on your artwork. It does not belong anywhere else in the classroom or on any other person. Um, any paper mache paste that gets on the table, stool, or floor must be cleaned up immediately. Um, once it dries, it becomes very difficult to clean up and um, we need to make sure that we clean it up right away with um, a wet wipe and a paper towel. Make sure to wash your hands with soap and water during cleanup. Um, sometimes water is not enough to remove the paper mache paste residue off of your hands. And last but not least, if you fail to follow any of these rules, um, this will result in the loss of privileges, meaning you won't get to work with paper mache anymore. Um, you could end up doing a research paper instead of um, participating in the project. You could also have a detention, um, most likely where you would be um, spending time with uh, me cleaning up the room. Um, or it could also result in an office referral. So please make sure that you follow these rules. Okay, in the last video you saw a demonstration on how to construct an armature. So you do want to have your armature completely finished before you start in on your paper mache. Once you have your armature fully built, everything stuck on very well, then you are going to want to get a piece of newspaper to work on to help catch any extra paste. You're going to grab some newspaper strips that I've pre-cut for you. Or paper towel strips, sometimes we skip ahead to that step. Be enough tote trays for one tote tray per table with newspaper strips. You're going to want a container of paste. Um, these you might have to share. There's enough for two um, tubs of paste per table. So make sure you scoot over to the, one of the corners of the table so that way you don't have far to reach. Um, and you're going to start on the paper mache. Um, this first layer that we're going to do is newspaper. Sometimes I will have you do newspaper first to help give some stability to our sculpture. Depending on time, sometimes we skip to paper towel strips. When you start, you're going to apply a layer of paste, a thin layer of paste. Then you're going to place your paper towel strip or newspaper strip over the top of the paste. And then once the strip is onto your piece, then you add a thin layer of paste over the top. So the piece of material that you apply, the strip that you apply should not look dry, um, but it should also not be dripping paste, okay? So if you see that your sculpture is dripping paste at any point during this process, you're using a little too much paste. The purpose of this layer is to really help um, give a nice smooth surface. You will notice that this one ends up a lot more smooth than the um, newspaper layer. You do want to really watch for wrinkles as you're applying this layer. Um, this layer will be the final layer and this will be the layer that we paint over. Um, it gives it a nice solid color so we're not having to compete um, with the colors of the newspaper when we paint. And um, again this goes on very similarly to the newspaper layer. The main difference is it is thinner, so if you were to just dip this in and really try and wipe the paste off, you're going to find that you're fighting it more for wrinkles. Um, so my recommendation is to apply a layer of paste first. Um, you will need to rip this into smaller pieces, and then once you um, have um, applied the layer of paste, go ahead and just set the newspaper sorry, the paper towel strip right over the top of the paste. Same thing as um, the newspaper. You do want to overlap the previous uh, piece to really help hold it into place. Use your fingers to smooth out the wrinkles um, so that you don't have wrinkling on your sculpture. Um, or if you do have wrinkles, try and keep them as small as possible. Um, or take another piece. So here I'm seeing quite a bit of wrinkling. I can take another piece and just go right over the top where I saw all those wrinkles and then apply a smoother piece over the top and that can really help um, because th since this is the final layer we don't want to have any wrinkles 
um, because then your paintbrush catches on them as you start to paint your hero. Um, same thing with loose pieces that aren't sticking to the sculpture that are sticking up. Um, your paintbrush catches on them and it becomes very difficult to paint um, neatly and to paint any um, details on your sculpture like the face or details on the clothing that you might want to add. So um, really take your time to smooth everything down. Oh, as you're working, um, really try and finish up with whatever layer you're on by the end of that day um, because um, you can't move on to the next step of painting until your paper mache is dry and it usually takes several hours for the paper mache to dry. Um, you can speed it up a little bit by using a hair dryer but sometimes um, even then you're wasting more time um, as you are trying to dry it because it can take a while for it to dry. So that's why I always say really aim to get it done by the end of class. When you go to wrap the hands and feet, you're going to wrap it the same way you wrapped it with tape. You will put a piece over the end um, to cover the tape and then you will take another piece and wrap it around the piece that you went over the end with in order to secure it. And you will do this for the hands and feet in all areas. As you approach the base of your sculpture, please do not paper mache over the very bottom of your sculpture. I should be able to read your name on the bottom of the pop can at all times.